Hi, my name is Justine Harkness. In previous videos, we looked at how to perform circuit calculations when we had resistors either in series or in parallel. In this video, we'll look at how to calculate the total resistance when we have resistors in series and in parallel. To calculate the total resistance when we have resistors in series and in parallel, the first thing we need to do is to examine the circuit and to look and see which resistors are in series and which resistors are in parallel. And what we'll do from there is start to simplify the circuit by adding resistors together to get one larger resistor. I like to start with ones that are in series. Since it's a pretty simple addition, we would just do the total resistance would be R1 plus R2, etc. Now, the next thing we'll look for are resistors that are in parallel. Remember, for parallel, we do that inverse add, where 1 over R total would be 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And we'd continue adding depending on how many circuits we had in parallel. And we're going to continue simplifying, making larger and larger total resistances until we get to the entire resistance of the circuit. And let's take a look at how to do this with an example. So this problem gives us a circuit diagram and asks us a few questions. The first question we have to address is, what is the total resistance of this circuit? Now we see we have five resistors and this is a little bit more complex of a diagram, but we first want to start by identifying what resistors are in series and what resistors are in parallel. Now the first ones we might notice are R1 and R2. These two resistors are in series. So we can go ahead and label that these are in series. The next two resistors we can look at that are also in series are R4 and R5. Now, sometimes looking at these, it can be a little bit confusing since they are on essentially two different sides of the circuit. They look like they might be in parallel, but if you're ever uncertain, we can always just trace the flow of current. So current's gonna come out of our battery. It goes through R5. It loops around this arm and goes directly through R4. So because the current passes directly through both of these resistors, these two resistors would in fact be in series, so we can label them in series. Finally, let's take a look at our resistors in parallel. So here we have R1 and R2, which we've already said are in series, and those two resistors are in parallel with R3. So we can say R1 and R2 are in parallel with R3. So this would be in parallel, so we can note that as well. Now let's just write down the formulas we're gonna use. So if we are in series, we know that our total would just be R1 plus R2, et cetera, for how many resistors we have in series. And if we are in parallel, we do an inverse add. So one over R total would be one over R1 plus one over R2, and so on. So let's start with resistors one and two. Those are in series. So we'll make one larger resistor, we'll call it R12, and we'll just use our formula for series. So we have the resistance of R1 plus the resistance of R2, and that would give us a total resistance of 20 ohms. So we can say R12 is 20 ohms. We can essentially now ignore R1 and R2. We also have R4 and 5 in series, so we'll make one larger resistor, we'll call it R4-5, be R4, which is 10 ohms, plus R5, which is 15 ohms, 
So this would give us a total resistance of 25 ohms. So we can put in here then R45 is 25 ohms, and we can now ignore R4 and R5 individually. Now we notice that R12 is in parallel with R3. So we're going to do more simplification. We're going to call that entire unit over there, composed of resistors 1, 2, and 3, R123. And we'll do that inverse add. We have 1 over R12, which is 1 over 20. We have 1 over R3. That would give us 2 over 20, which would simplify to 1 over 10. So that means that R123 would be 10 ohms. Finally, we have R123 and R45 in series. So adding those together would get the total resistance. So we'll plug in R123, 10 ohms. We have R45 as 25 ohms. And this would give us a total resistance of this circuit as 35 ohms. Part B asks us to determine how much current is drawn from the battery. So we're going to use Ohm's law. V is equal to IR. And we'll rearrange this to solve for the current. So current would be the voltage of the battery divided by our total resistance. We'd have our voltage of our battery, 10 volts. Our total resistance, we calculated on part A, is 35 ohms. This would give us a current of 0.29 amps. So now you should feel more comfortable performing calculations when we have resistors both in series and in parallel.